uh, grab your Bibles, let's pray, and then we're going to go into the Word and allow God to be, uh, just to speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, we need you. We want to hear from you this morning. We want to be all that you would have us to be. This ministry has a vision, mission, destiny. Your people here this morning have a destiny, God, and we want to hear from you this morning. This morning, we just want to give the time to just open your word and dissect scripture and just say what you would have us to say, Lord. So let us remain true to the truths of scripture so we can be we can realize this vision you've given us. So, oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we bless your name. So move this morning, Lord. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles. Go to the book of Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. We're going to share from there uh, this morning so that the Holy Spirit would move. Um, let me just review briefly a couple of the things that we've been sharing and then um, we're going to walk through. Uh, I just want to speak to you from my heart this morning. Can I do that? Amen. Just to hear from God. We, for the past few weeks, we've been dealing with this same idea. We come to know God by experience as we obey him. And he accomplishes his work through us. First thing we share with you when we first started the series is that God wants us to know him. And for us to know God, we must obey him. And when we obey him, he works through us. And then when he works through us, we experience him. Are you with me? Uh, come on. Um, come on, say, God wants me to know him. Say it. Repeat, say, to know God, I must obey him. When I obey God, he works through me. And when God works through me, I experience him. When God works through me, I experience him. That's very, very important. Don't miss those things because today I want to talk about the whole issue of the fact that, um, that we want to experience God and know who God is. So here's, I want you to just to, to, to lock your hat on this, this thought, um, benefiting from the produce of the land or the produce of the land. And what that speaks to is the fact that God now wants to work through us so we can know him, Okay. Um, let me, let me begin here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, For everything there's a season and there's a time for every activity under the sun. Okay? Say it one more time. To everything there's a season and there's a time to every activity under the sun. The reason I'm saying that is I, I firmly believe that this ministry is about to walk into the season of God for the destiny of the ministry. And I need to share some things this morning from the Word of God that we can look into it um, so, we not miss, so we don't miss what God has in store for us and we don't miss where God is taking us. Everything that we've been doing thus far, talking about knowing God, has been leading up to uh, this passage that's in front of us. And the reason I quoted Ecclesiastes is because the text I want to share with you is not a text that's foreign to this ministry. It's not a text that's foreign to this church in that I've shared that with you uh, several years back. But the reason I, I dealt with the whole thing of the seasons and timing of God is, is God will release a word and then there comes a point in time where when the ministry of the individual, the person that the word was destined for, comes to the place where it's about time for God to do what he wants to do, sometimes you got to relive it. Amen? You have to relive it. You have to revisit it. You have to walk through it to kind of look and see what God is saying. So what we have, what we have in chapter 5 by way of literary context is this whole scenario where the children of Israel were at, they found themselves prior to chapter 5 across the Jordan. Now they had just crossed the Jordan, okay? Very, very important statement. They had crossed the Jordan. And if you remember with me when we're in chapter 3, what God said, I'm going to make myself known to you by dealing with the inhabitants of Canaan, the, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Hivites. I'm going to deal with all those people um, because the world will know that I am God through you. So here we are that it's the, it, this is now the end of a 40-year journey. Okay, the end of, of the wandering in the wilderness for a long, long time, 
wondering if God was ever going to do what God said he was going to do. So he proved himself faithful. The Israelites obeyed God, stepped into the Jordan. They found themselves on the other side. And I want to kind of pick the text up so we can see what God is saying. So if you jump down to chapter 4, verse 24, uh, let, me, let me just read 4 and 24. And then we're going to walk through chapter 5 to see what the good Lord is saying. Notice what verse 4 of 24 says. So, all, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty and that they may fear the Lord your God. So what that verse is referencing, God said to them, when you cross the Jordan, you remember this from last week, set up some memorials. Anybody remember that? Hey, come on, anybody? Get you some memorials so you can mark the space to show the faithfulness of God. If, if you're wondering what we're talking about, I want to encourage you to go to our website, down weeks, download last week's message, get that in your spirit, and you'll be so now here's the thing. They have marked the place. They've set up these memorials. Now, uh, at the end of this journey, God is about to bless the socks off of the people, okay? And, but in order for God to bless the socks off of them, there's a preparation that needs to take place. There, there is a revisiting of the ordinances of God, there's a revisiting of the things of God that God needs them to walk through so they can receive the full benefit of what God has in store. Now, does anybody in here know that God wants to bless the socks off of you? Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all don't sound like y'all. It sounds like you are already blessed or something and you just got a flat going on, you know. But, but does anybody want God to bless the socks off of you? Come on, don't fool me. Say amen like you mean it. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he wants to do that. And the reason I want to say this is, is yesterday we had, a, you know, an important meeting with, with some of the core um, ministry leaders of the ministry, and we shared some things. And more importantly, some of the things that we said is that for the first five years when we released our, our vision statement, we missed some goals, we missed some deadlines, we missed some things that we were supposed to do. So we're looking to do things completely different. And so I love this passage because... What the, what the goal of what we said is that we want to make the transition from being volunteer-led to bringing the right staff on board to help the ministry get to where it needs to go. So here it is. Here it is. For us, crossing the Jordan then would be bringing the staff on board to take the ministry to the next place. Okay? Now hear this. The moment we start bringing staff on board, and we're very, very close to doing that, so you'll be hearing that we're talking about bringing an executive pastor on board. That's going to happen extremely quickly, and we'll be sharing and talking to you about that. The church is going to look different. Come on, y'all. Okay? Ministry is going to be different here, right? And I think in all of your life, all of your life, there's a crossing over that I'm going to challenge you to define what that is from your, for your own takeaway. What is it or where is it God, that God wants to take me? What is it that God wants to do differently in my life? What is, God, what is God calling me to? What is God shaping me to? What does my Canaan look like that now that I've taken the step of faith and when I take the step of faith that God wants to do phenomenal in my life. So this text kind of picks up and talks about that a little bit. So look with me, look with me at, um, at verse 1 of chapter 5. And I want to kind of flesh this out and we'll just talk. I just want to share from the depths of my heart because this is burning in my spirit. Say amen if you at verse 1 of chapter 5. Verse 1 says, As soon as all the king of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the people of Israel until they had crossed over. Notice what it says. Their hearts melted and they were no longer, and there was no longer any spirit in them. Watch this. Because of the people of Israel. Okay? I'm going to read that one more time because this is going to lay the foundation. As soon as all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites 
who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the people of Israel until they had crossed over. Their hearts were melted and there was no longer any spirit in them because of the spirit of Israel. Now, I hope you've been watching or tracking this series with me because I need y'all to get what's going on here. Understand with me now, God had already promised that he was going to deliver the Israelites into the land of promise. So here's what's going on. As long, as long as the Israelites that had the Jordan separating, I mean, as long as the Canaanites had the Jordan separating the Israelites from them, there was a sense of arrogance and confidence in the life of the Canaanites. Here's what they were saying. They'll never make it over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and as long as the Israelites stood there, lock into this, as long as the Israelites stood there, here's what the Canaanites were saying. Y'all stay there, we'll stay here, and they went on doing life as usual, okay? But now here's what God said to the Israelites. I need you to take a step of faith, and I need you to step in, right? They stepped in, God parted the waters, and then they were on the other side. And then look at what happened. Now that the Israelites found themselves in the territory of the Canaanites, the first five verses says that the people who said they would never make it, all of a sudden are freaking out, right? And, and, and lock into this, because they realized that there was a God on the side of his people. And when his people take the step of faith to step out, the enemies of the people of God realize that God will intervene on behalf of his people. Okay? Now, the reason I want to flesh that out is because there's somebody watching you. Somebody has heard of your destiny and somebody has heard of what God has called you to do. But as long as you stay on the other side of the Jordan and don't step in, they don't have no, nothing to worry about because here's what they're saying. You ain't never going to make it. Come on, talk to me, y'all. You'll never get there. You'll never realize that goal. You'll never be a doctor. You'll never be a lawyer. You'll never be a psychiatrist. You're going to stay in the project all the days of your life. Y'all not hearing me. But the moment you step out and all of a sudden God paved the way for you to go to college. I wish I had a witness or two. All of a sudden, God paved the way for, for, to open doors. He, he, here's what the text says. They step back in fear because they realize it's not you. It's God working. Let me say it differently. It's not you. It was him pulling you. Yeah, y'all going to get it in a little while. Yeah, they get that. And so look at what it does. It, it instills fears in them. Now, the reason I need to press that out. The ministry is 18 years old, and I know I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too unwise that there's folks saying we'll never get there. I know that. There's folks saying we'll never get there. But let me say this to you. We're on the other side. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're on the other side. We stepped in. We're on the other side, and things are going to look different. Come on, I want you all to hear me say that. Things are going to look different because here's what's going to happen. It talks about the Amorite kings on the west, and the Canaanite kids realize that those people are serious about what God has called them to do. Imagine, if you will, if the word on the streets of Aurora was, man, these people at Restoration Christian Fellowship, they're feeding the hungry. Come on. They're clothing the the, the, the naked. They're bringing people to a relationship with God. It doesn't matter what your problem is. There's a group of people that's there to care about you. Come on. They're educating children. They're restoring lives to homes. Marriages are being restored. Husbands are going, y'all, come on, come on. They're going back home. Ministries happening. Imagine if the word on the street is what God is doing. Y'all not hearing me. This community will be different. And so crossing over, crossing over, crossing over means a lot. So the moment those Israelites took the step of faith, the community, the naysayers, the bystander realized God's on their side. I want you to hear me say to you this morning, God is on your side. Yeah, come on. 
God, come on, say, repeat after me. Say, self, God is on my side. One more time, say it again. Say, self, God is on my side. But you must take the step of faith. And the moment you step, watch what God's going to do. So there's three things. There's three things I want to share with you from this text so that we can learn and receive what God has in store. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So to continue the path of success, I'm picking up from when we begin the year in 2018. Hear this. There must be a cutting away of anything that hinders progress or attaches us to our past. Say amen. <clears throat> Come on, say amen. You, you won't like this, but it'll, it'll, it'll set you free. To continue the path to success in 2018, there must be a cutting away of anything that hinders progress or attaches us to our past. You know, there's been failures in yesteryear. There's been missed opportunities in yesteryear. There's been all of that stuff, not only in the life of this ministry, but in your personal life as well. And now that you're on the other side of the Jordan, you can't drag, you can't drag it across. Is this making sense? So look at the text and notice how God now instructs Joshua and what he says for this new season in the life of the Israelites. So look with me at um, verse 2, and then we're going to pick up for here. Verse 2 says, At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives, knives and circumcise the sons of Israel a second time. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the son of the Israel at Gibeath Haraloth. And it says, verse 4, and this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the males of the people who came out of Egypt and all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. Though all the people who came out had been circumcised, yet all the people who were born on the way in the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation... Uh, until the nation, the men of war who came out of Egypt were perished because they did not, what's that word? Come on, say, because they did not want, obey the voice of the Lord. Of the Lord. Um, and it said, the Lord swore to them that he would not let them see the land that the Lord had sworn to their fathers to give to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So it was their children whom he raised up in their place that Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. That's a mouthful. Let me explain what's going on. Now, the Israelites are across the Jordan. They, they're, in, they're getting ready to go into their land of promise. And, and you, gotta, you have to see this in the text because the moment they crossed over, the text says all the enemies backed up. And, and so, so now here's what God said. Now that you're on the other side, before you take another step, okay, there's a cutting away that must take place of anything that hinders progress, okay, or attaches you to your past. Now, give me a moment just to talk about this. Here's circumcision in, in the biblical rite, particularly in the Old Testament. When God entered into covenant or the Abrahamic covenant with Abraham, here is God, what God said to Abraham. As a sign that I am your God and I am a covenant-keeping God, I need you to circumcise every male in your household, whether you purchase them, whether they were born in your house or descendants, circumcise them, and it says on the eighth day of their birth. Now, here's what circumcision, um, real, um, what, it, what it symbolized. Circumcision symbolized a covenantal relationship with God. You guys are tracking with me. It, it was a dealing with, with the issue that has to do with sexual sin and all of that stuff. So, so you had people that had left Egypt and were in the wandering for 40 years that that has not been done with. Now, I don't want you all to think I'm speaking literal and locked into the Old Testament framework of circumcision. Here's what circumcision looks like in the New Testament. Paul says it this way. It's not a circumcision of the flesh, but it's a circumcision of the what? 
Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's the circumcision of what? The heart. One more time. It's the circumcision of of the heart. So here's what that looks like. When you come to Christ, when you develop a relationship with Christ, here's what he says. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. What does that mean? God spiritually circumcises your heart when you come to a relationship with him, okay? Here's the problem with circumcisions of the heart. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And because we're in the world, old things can grow back even though the old were taken away. Right? So here's what, here's what God said to Joshua to do with the people. Listen, y'all and crossed over, and excuse the grammar, before you take another step, this is New Testament, make sure everybody who's with you, their heart is right. Oh, oh y'all, y'all not going to hear me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And make sure they are aligned with where you're going. Now, the reason that's important, because you're going to have a whole lot of folk in the camp that will fool you into thinking the heart is right, but there comes a point in time where there must be a heart check before you take another step. Oh, I need two witnesses. I need, I need, I need two witnesses. I, because I've been in ministry a while, and I know about the meeting after the meeting. Come on. Come on, come on. I know about that. You've been living a while. And you know about the meeting after the meeting in your personal life. Come on, you're in the crowd, but the moment you leave the crowd, they hold a meeting about you. Or don't act like it doesn't happen to you. And and God is saying the same thing to you. Watch your crowd, watch your circle of influence, and check their heart, and there must be a cutting away of anything that hinders progress and attaches you to your past. Because the worst thing that will slow you down is folk walking with you, yet they're talking about you. Come on, y'all, talk to me. I know I'm not talking to myself because you've got friends. Here's how we say it in the world, folk talking behind my back. Well, the reason they're doing that is because you allowed them to walk with you and you haven't circumcised their heart. Anything that hinders progress, anything, Bubba and them, doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter how long they've been walking with you. Forty years, he says. Then he says what? Circumcise. Cut away anything that hinders progress. Now, let me, let me show you all a couple of things because I want to make this clear. I want you all to kind of to, to not miss what they're saying. So it's three things as it relates to a cutting away, okay? Because the cutting away, number one, it prevents our future from being tainted with the sins of our past. Okay? I'm going to flesh that out. The reason you got to cut away is, number one, it presents your, prevents your future from being tainted with the sins of your past. Now, y'all looking at me like you're lost. Let me me show you how these folks had to deal with the same things we have to deal with in our personal lives, in our business life, and in ministry. Understand with me, Moses was a wanted murderer. And, 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 And the people made a choice to follow Moses. Now, Joshua just came on the scene, and for 40 years, while they were wondering, don't fool yourself into thinking that the people were born, that were born in the wilderness had not heard about Moses. And so here's what this looked like. They're walking. They're walking together. But every now and then, there's a few that will stop behind. Let me tell you about Moses. He don't know what he's doing. And that Joshua, man, I don't know if I want to follow him, man, because he's just going some crazy stuff. He's just doing some whatever. And, and here's what they're doing, stepping behind, trying to keep the, the Israelites in their past by reminding them of past failures, past things, past what. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Come on. The, the meeting after the meeting, right, gentlemen? Come on, y'all. And, and, and they're spreading all kinds of stuff and trying to delay process because here's all they can see in, in, in the in life. The reason it's taken us 40 years is because Moses wasn't right. The reason it's taken 40 years is because Moses struck the rock when he should have spoke to it. The reason it's taken us 40 years is because he killed a person and and God is punishing him for killing y'all. They make stuff up. 
And y'all can follow that Joshua all you want. It's going to take y'all 40 years because the same problem Moses had, you knew he was Moses' boy, right? Can we talk this morning? Can we talk? Here's what he said in chapter 3. I want the folk to know that I, as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. So number one, if you want to make it into your destiny, you can't take everybody with you. Can we, can we just talk honestly? I'm trying to help us. If you want to be successful in 2018, you can't keep the same folk that keep, uh, I know they're talking about me. I'm just going to keep an eye on them. No, cut them off. Because <laughs> you might stop looking once and they'll sneak in. Can we talk this morning? Can we talk? We got to cut them off because anything that prevents future. Let, let, let me just say this. Let me say this to you all and I'll say to myself and as a ministry. Who I am today is not who I was yesterday. Does that make sense? You've heard me say this. Who you are today is not who you were yesterday. Come on, does that make sense? If, if you can say I'm committed to God, I'm serving God, and every day with Jesus is not sweeter than the day before, the problem is not Jesus, the problem is you. Come on, are you hearing me? So as we continue to walk with God, we get closer to him, we become more like him, and we look more like him. So a cutting away must take place of all the negative talk, all all the naysayers, or else you'll never get there. Let me put this in the context of the ministry. We're about to make the transition to staff-led. The last thing we need is folks saying what's not going to work. Oh, y'all know. Let me just talk candidly this morning. The last thing we need folks saying I'm an original founding member of the church. I don't seen 50 things tried and 55 failed. That's the last thing we need. Are you with me? If that's your framework, you might as well go ahead and stay behind because we're going forward. Come on. Can, can we talk this morning? And in your personal life, we need to have that same framework. If you want to get to destiny, you've got to make up in your mind who you're going to serve and go forward as it relates to what God calls you to be. Very, very important to hear. And here's the thing. I said this a little bit. Sometimes the cutting away must occur in the lives of people who've walked with you during the journey. Everybody born in the wilderness, 40 years plus they've been walking Check their heart. And here's the reason for the circumcised decision. Because a covenantal relationship with God speaks to unity. So if they don't have the mark of circumcision, they're not in covenant with God. You got to be unified. Are you with me? You got to be unified. You got to be unified. Because in this next season, if we're not unified, here's what the thing says. Cutting away must be done in haste. Or it could cause another missed deadline. You got to hurry up and do this thing. <laughs> they got, here's how I said it all the time. Egypt to Canaan, probably 11 days, maybe less, maybe a little more. And because they got there, because of disobedience, 40 more years. Major miss. You get where I'm going? We're taking a step of faith as ministry. I don't have 40 years. <laughs> Maybe you do, Pastor D. I, I don't have. And I'm not going to let you cause me. <laughs> to miss a deadline with God because of my disobedience. In my life, and I'm going to say the same thing to you. I'm challenging you the same way in your personal life. You know who the Judases are in your camp. Don't allow that to cause you to miss another deadline. Does that make sense? So say it out loud. Say, I've got to cut some things off. One more time. Say it again. I must cut some things off. Okay. Very, very important. Very, very important. Let me just move on real quick because here's the thing. Once the cutting away is complete, here's what it does. It, it, it positions you to begin the process of dealing with the shame of your past. 
This is a very, very important principle, and I'm almost done, okay? Once the cutting away is complete, you can begin the process of dealing with the shame of your past. Now, un- let, let, let me take a moment. Let's, let's just read. Let's just read. Let me show you this, and I'll read, and we'll talk about it. Look with me at um, verse 9 of the text. Look with me. Um, yeah. Ver- let's look. Eight for context, then nine. When the circumcising of the whole nation was finished, they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. Okay, look at verse 9. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you so that the name of this place is called Gilgal to this day. Okay, listen to this, guys. And and here's how I'm going to say this, and then we're going to walk through this. If you have somebody in your life that constantly reminds you of the failure you had yesterday. And every time you hear it, it hurts. You, you get the point. You, you get, does this make sense? You get the point. You get the point. Y'all don't got quiet now. It's because you can't even begin dealing with the shame of your past because of the constant reminder. Now, I need to say this, but I don't need nobody to hear it wrong. So let me, let me give you the caveat. I am not telling anybody to get divorced. I got to say that first. I do. I got to say that first because somebody going to say, I, I'm going to court divorce court money because my pastor told me. No. I got to say that first, all right? I'm not telling anybody to get divorced, okay? But if there's been failures in your marriage and the relationship can't get right, all right? Because you're always being reminded of what happened yesterday. Something needs to be cut. You see why I have to say that preference, right? You see why I have to say Because somebody's going to say, I know I need to cut you off. I know it. I know it. <laughs> no, no. It could be the talk. It could be the language. It could be anything that's going on. There needs to be a separation because I can't heal right because the moment God begins to work, you're telling me what yesterday looked like. You get where I'm going? You get where I'm going? Does this make sense? And here's what happened in the life of the Israelites, right? God delivered them from from Egypt. And and you got to understand, here's the Egyptians. Y'all ain't going to make it. You ain't going nowhere. You're never going to build that event center. You're never going to build that youth center. You're never going to do the things that God called you to do. And, 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 And you've been hurt so much that you can't begin the process of healing because you're constantly being reminded of what happened yesterday. Cut it off so you can start dealing with the healing, all right? Here's why God said circumcise them again. Because circumcision, understand with me, was a covenantal mark. So now all of them, once they were circumcised again, had the guarantee that God was with them. Oh, you need a guarantee this morning to know, right, that God is with you. Here is what he says. Here is how you will know, chapter 3 again, that the Lord is with you. And then once they stepped and obeyed, and he parted that Jordan, and they made it to the other side, he says, let's seal this thing. Let's seal it so we can guarantee we'll get to the next place, okay? So if you're still struggling, if you're still struggling with yesteryear in your personal life, in your business life, in ministry life, you might want to check who's reminding you of what you used to be. Because last I checked with God, when he forgives, he puts it into the sea of forgetfulness. Are you with me? And he separates our sins as far as the east is from the west. Never to be reminded no more. So I should not be dealing with the shame of Egypt. Let me say this real quick, and and y'all bear with me. Maybe the problem today is a lot of us don't know where Egypt is. Yeah. Egypt is the drug house that you left behind. Come on. Egypt is the prostitute den that we left behind. Come on. Egypt is the old sins that we committed yesterday that God sent his son, the Moses of today, to go to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. And the moment God brought you from by his hand and took you out of Egypt, who you are today is not who you were when you were in bondage in Egypt. 
You've been set free, so you don't need nobody telling you who you used to be yesterday because you can't go forth in ministry in the shame of yesteryear. Whom the Son, therefore, has set free, Scripture says, is what? Free indeed. You come to me talking about yesterday, I'm going to go like that and keep walking. And we need a church of folk that when somebody, girl, let me tell you, and keep walking. Are you with me? Come on, does this make sense? Just cut them off. Cut them off. Because if there's one thing that will delay the deliverable, it's a lot of naysayers. We walk by faith. And what? Let me show you this last thing. And you all be patient with me. Let me show you this last thing. This is very, very important. Look, look with me. Look with me. Let's see it in Scripture first. Look with me at verse 10. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, while the people of Israel were encamped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, in the evening on the plains of Jericho. And the day after the Passover, on that very day, notice what it says. They ate the produce of the land, unleavened bread, cakes, parched grain, and verse 12 just blows me away. And the manna ceased the day after they ate the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. This is heavy. This is heavy. Long statement, but hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. And hear God speak to us this morning. Cutting away those things that hinders progress while dealing with the shame of our past positions us to benefit from the produce of the land. Let me explain. Forty years of wilderness wandering. Prior to that, remember with me, Moses had sent 12 spies to see Canaan. Bring back from the fruit. Tell us, is the land fertile? Tell us, does it look like what God said it's going to look like? On and on. Now understand with me. Twelve guys... They went into the gardens of Canaan, and they picked some fruit and a, what you call that, cluster of grapes was so big, they had to put a stick between it. You grab an end, I'll grab the other end. Watermelons were so big, they couldn't fit in the trunk of the car. Come on. Hey, six of y'all pick up this watermelon. Y'all not hearing me. Come on, yeah. Stuff was so juicy. And you got to lock into this. Here they come back to the camp carrying this stuff, right? And here's the people in the camp. Whoa, we never seen nothing like that. Man, that's amazing. God did, God's going to do, God sure enough said he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Watch 10 naysayers. Yeah, it's like God says, but I don't think we can do it because there's giants in the land. We don't have enough members and we don't have enough money. <laughs> but it looks like God says. Y'all track it with me, right? And lock into this. And for 40 years now, they had to walk around in the wilderness having seen what it could be like. Having tasted of the goodness of God. Having witnessed that God did say what God is going to do. But because of disobedience, they missed it. So here's the result. Living for 40 years, paycheck to paycheck. Somebody ought to say, preacher, that's me. Don't, don't say it out loud. 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 Yeah, don't say it out loud. Heck, not even paycheck to paycheck. Um, pay moment to pay moment. <laughs> Right? We, here's what it looks like for, for I'm, telling, I'm not telling y'all what I heard because that used to be me. All right? Is that when you get paid, it's already gone because you needed to get an advance. To... Yeah, see, we can all identify with that. Let's be honest with ourselves. Amen? 
And, and, and it isn't like God didn't show us what he can do. It isn't like God didn't do what God said he's going to do. The problem was us. Does that make sense? So here's what happens when we cut away the things that hinder us and we deal with the shame of the past. Listen what the text says. That day after the Passover, the manna stopped. Here's what manna was. you got to understand with me that the whole time they were standing on the other side of the Jordan, as long as they stayed there, it was manna. And what manna was was just enough provision for one day. Okay, here's what manna looked like. All you had to do was go outside and collect it and eat it for that day. Okay, you couldn't invest it. Y'all missing that, yeah. You couldn't put it to get a little bit of savings account in the bank. Y'all missing this, y'all missing this. <laughs> you, you couldn't even buy, afford a car payment with it because before you can get it to the car dealer to make the down payment, it was gone. Manna, manna. Just enough for one day. The moment they stepped, and here's the other part, here's the other part. They crossed Jordan, and if I read the text correctly, I'm venturing to say that they could be in Canaan with a wilderness mindset still having manna in Canaan. Right? So here's what God says. You want to stop the manna? Circumcise. Heal. And move forward. Right? And listen to the Bible. The moment the Bible says that they did those things, the manna did what? Stopped. And they ate the produce of the land. This, this, come, come on, y'all. I hear me. <laughs> they, they got to more than enough. Yeah. All of a sudden, the produce says, here's what produce says. I can plant one seed. And when I go plant one seed, that one seed produces a whole lot of grains with a whole lot more seeds in it. Y'all not hearing me. Come on. I can plant one thing. So here's what um, produce of the land look like. I can eat for today and I can invest the rest for tomorrow. I can eat for today and I can save for tomorrow. I can eat for today and there's blessings for tomorrow. I can eat for today. That's what produce says. That's destiny, right? But to get there, there needs to be a shift. There needs to be a change. There needs to be certain things that's got to take place. And God wants us to take, get to the place where we are benefiting from the produce of the land. I'm done, but let me say this, just pastoral statement. Here we are sitting, watching our Canaan and not benefiting from the produce of the land. What's wrong? Is there some things that need to be cut off? Is there some healing that needs to take place so we can continue to walk and reap all that God has in store for us? Right? Here's your application. Here you sit every day. You can see the promotion on the job. You can see the new home. You can see the destiny. You can see the investment into the future. You can see all of that, but you just can't get to it. What's hindering you from benefiting from the produce of the land? Here's how I want to end service today. Let me just get Dominique. God pulled us through as far as he could. Now, he's done pulling us through. He wants to work, work, work through us to go the rest of the way. Because he wants to walk with us. Does that make sense? So here's your challenge. What's hindering you? In your personal life, corporate life, business life, family life, what's hindering you? The church, we're about to take some risks because I think we figured out what's been hindering us. No more. No more. We're going. In your own way, what's hindering you? Ask it, Tommy, come on. Bow your heads and just go to God. Go to God. Go to God. Go to God. What's hindering you? What's hindering you? What's hindering you? Here's what it looks like. Number one, if you have not said yes to God as personal Lord and Savior, Man, that's a major impedance. 
that's something major that will stop us all from getting there. So if you came this morning and you haven't said yes to God, you haven't said, God, circumcise my heart, clean me up, it begins there. It begins there, a relationship with God. So if you're here and you haven't said yes to God, just take a moment. All you have to do is bow your head and say, Lord, come into my life. Save me, Lord. Forgive me. Give me a fresh start. And God will do that. He will do just that. Do just that. But you can't continue to grow with God and stay where you are. So there needs to be some cutting away, some things God will let go. You can't allow people to speak and breathe negativity in your life. You cannot allow it. Some cutting off needs to take place. Healing has to take place. And you move forward. You move forward to reap the benefits of the land. Holy Spirit, be God in our midst, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We're all excited about you, God. Is it scary? Yeah. Does it take a step of faith? Yes. But you're God. And for everything, there's a season and a time for every activity under the sun. And we believe you this morning, God. We want to know you. Knowing you requires obedience. Obedience positions us for us to work through us, for you to work through us. And when you work through us, we experience you. Now you want us to experience thee by benefiting from the produce of the land. Speak, God. Speak. Speak, Lord. Speak in your name. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord.